Yay! And I'm back! And this time I'm not only very excited but scared shitless because this is my first live stream ever. And why am I doing this? Because I thought there's so much going on with lots of virtual world, like a whole metaverse uh, coming together from different virtual worlds is coming into existence and I want to visit them all. And of course, I start at my home world, Chaotica. My name is Chaos Princess. You might know me from Twitter. If not, you know me now. And thanks for watching this. And yeah, so what do I do best to introduce you to my favorite virtual home world called High Fidelity? Well, let's visit my friends. In order to do that, we open this tablet here. Here we have some nice immersion effect. And go to the go to and see that some people are waiting for us in the palace. So. Quick, everybody, all run away, quick. <laughs> don't run, don't run, run, run away, away. don't run, run away. Chaos, Chaos, Chaos doesn't Chaos just princess. doesn't know Queen. where the camera is. Okay, this was like Marcus uh, gave me a heads up about that. He was like, okay, do it very. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of hiccups. So sorry everybody if this is a bit chaotic, let's call it authentic. And I get some nice picture. Yeah, yeah. So oop. Where are you guys? This is the wrong camera. Here is my camera <laughs> in my hand. <laughs> so here is a weird camera, which isn't mine. Let's hide that. And do we have a nice yeah, picture? Okay. Aaron, Aaron near me. So everybody wave into the camera. Hi. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello everybody on Twitter and Periscope and later Hi. on if I Hello. polished it on YouTube. And yeah, we are in High Fidelity VR. And these are my wonderful friends. Caitlin. Yay. Hi. Mwah. Maki. Mwah. Uh, <laughs> my chair. <laughs> my chair's in the way. Wait, let me get into the room. Scott. Franny. This, uh, this one I have to look up. Lex, hey Lex, Hello. good to see you. This is Kenneth. Hello. This is Piper. And last not least, Ice. Ice is here. And <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm starting this streaming series, Chaos Tours the Metaverse. And um so uh whoop, I wanna visit them Sorry. all like all of the virtual worlds which are out there but of course i start at the best of them all our home world high fidelity <laughs> and so uh let's do a first before we get into like the traditional <laughs> uh talking <laughs> i need something i wanted to talk about anyhow as a live test can somebody check if this stream is up on Twitter? And yes, is it I'm is. watching it on Twitter it right is. now. Yeah. Cool. Can we get it in as a web entity? Yeah, we can try um, it. I'm not sure if it'll uh, play. Um, no. I can't even get <laughs> the animated GIFs to work in here. It's yeah. not going to work. It's not going to work. Okay. Just, it's not going to. Don't even try. Oh, I see it playing. <laughs> Yay. Yahoo! That's awesome. Yeah. It's playing. It's playing with my band. <laughs> this is like... Yeah, probably the most hilarious stream <laughs> since the last newbies stream. Um, yeah, this was one thing. Uh, then we we can like cover that at once. 
Uh, how about the media import into high fidelity? I know I can bring up a web entity and stream YouTube, but that directly streams to my machine, if I'm right. And it's quite complicated to to get something in which uh, streams like synchronously for everybody, or how how is the state of the media import in high fidelity yet? Hmm. Well, you can stream a uh, WebRTC in, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's pretty easy to, to watch films. Mm -hmm. Maki here, who's on my shoulders, is an expert on that. And it's um, really complicated. <laughs> right it <now>. was complicated. <laughs> but I mean, it, the, the biggest problem is that um, you need a really powerful computer to do it because it's not, there's nothing Ah, it's hard to explain. To do the stream? Mm -hmm. I mean, it depends. On how? What, what do you want to stream? How do you? I, I no, I just want to, uh, like, do do a comparison of all kinds of virtual worlds. So I'm also gonna go mm -hmm. to sensor, uh, VR chat, yeah. big screen, engage, uh, for example. And I I want to compare, like, how easy is it? If somebody says like, oh, I just saw this great YouTube video, let's watch it all together. Mm. Um, well, it's complicated. Okay. You need a web server and you need to convert the video into WebM and then you need a syncing mm -hmm. script through WebSockets. Um, there's many systems in place. Uh, I've put them all together and helped with Kenneth cool. to get the cinema working. So there is a cinema place where that can work here, but you'll have to borrow it or have someone like me set so, it up. So it's doable, but it needs a lot of geek foo. Yes. Okay. Great <laughs> that we have geeks in but here. It works. Yay. Yay. Um, okay. So let's start the traditional part. Hey guys, we are here in high fidelity. How would you describe our favorite virtual world platform? Empty. Oh, oh. Well, you're here filling the void. It's very high fidelity. Uh, you're a good void filler. Everybody <coughs> ran away. Yeah, well, it seems like the same core people are here, though, doesn't it? Like, like it's more like a bunch of people came when the company was giving out money. <laughs> and now we, we don't want to lose it. We're just like, I'm just going to keep staying here because they're going to take all my money away. <laughs> <laughs> what, what people don't realize is the only reason this floor is here is because without our feet, there'd be nothing to hold it up. Glad we're here to keep it in place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for our amazing viewers, maybe a quick update. High Fidelity is the successor of Second Life. It's the brainchild of amazing Philip Rosedale and he started off I think no 2014 way. and built High Fidelity as a virtual world and it's open source peer-to-peer -peer, you can script in it and you can implement all kinds of great things like these trackers and it's a uh, yeah, super colorful. Everybody can host their own domain. Um, but unfortunately, mass adoption didn't proceed as fast as everybody hoped. And so High Fidelity was like the first of, of the virtual world to concentrate on um, to orientate differently at the moment and uh, with, uh, which is now doing like a remote working, de mainly desktop based application for business. Did, did I get that right? Mm-hmm. And pretty much. But the source is open core. <laughs> the, the code is open source. <laughs> This was a chaotic <laughs> up. Um, so everybody's free to, to grab it and, and build a wonderful, perfect virtual world on their own, ain't it? 
Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking, I was looking at our federated high fidelity user group today, and one of our community members said, well, is, is the tower of high fidelity falling? And um, I thought about this for a while and thought how interesting of a question this is, because unlike other virtual world platforms where it's like a service and there's one monolithic provider of all of the services, high fidelity isn't really a tower that can fall. It's Instead, it's like a bunch of little islands and we all have our little satellite dishes sort of pointed at a central antenna, kind of like this one server that the company operates to maintain user accounts and sort of a world directory. But other than that, like every world here is on, you know, on servers that we all host and operate ourselves. So it really can't be taken away from us and it really can't fall. And I think that's the beautiful magic of high fidelity, you know, um, mm -hmm. Sansar, Altspace, Rec Room, VR Chat, all it would take is for those companies to fold and yeah. they switch off the lights yeah. and those servers yeah. and all of that content. Same with Second Life. It just disappears. Yeah. Um, high Fidelity could, you know, like a, the whole company could be on an airplane and it crashes into the sea and an atomic bomb goes off in yeah. San Francisco yeah. and you can still run High Fidelity, although I don't want any of those things to happen, um, of course. <laughs> yeah, that, that was what, what like intrigued me from the beginning. Like first I learned like, uh, okay, if you want to bring stuff in like your avatar or weird cat bark trees or dinosaurs, which you can't see now from the camera, uh, you got to host it yourself. And I was like, Oh my goodness, I'm a side tracker. How, how should I uh, take care of all that hosting business? But thanks to Caitlin's wonderful blog post about uh, how to host an avatar, and thanks to a great documentation and a great help by the hi hi fi staff, I finally managed to put up my own domain, Chaotica, where we started off the stream. And I also managed to get this wonderful avatar in. And you all managed to get your wonderful avatars in. And uh, then it, it became clear to me that like, like with this structure, there was this architecture in place, the company could go bankrupt. The uh, servers could crash. The servers could uh, get bricked. But uh, as long as my server is still up, uh, my domain will still be up, so I don't actually need High Fidelity Inc. to support yeah. that. And that's Should really the, the beauty. And this makes it a wonderful uh, platform for free speech because no one can censor what you do or take you down. Um, you know, no one can really like condemn and close, well, they can condemn, but they can't close and shut down your worlds or you know, your access to those worlds, which has its ups and downs maybe, but ultimately free speech wins in that case. Yes. Um, <laughs> and with that comes just wild and creative open self-expression, um, which is important. It's, but, but I got one uh, a bit provocative uh, question, like, until last April, when, when High Fidelity was still pivoting towards virtual worlds, uh, they were like developing state-of-the-art stuff. Like whatever was implemented was like no noob had ever heard of it. Like whatever, uh, we need texture compression. We get that new Draco thing from Google. <laughs> we need a... Uh, commerce system we get it based on the blockchain uh, and it went uh, high fidelity coin and um, and so they they researched lots of awesome stuff for for virtual worlds and for me I'm, I'm like a VR junkie uh, like to feel good in VR and now, now comes the provocative part. Uh, with them, with High Fidelity now, focusing on uh, developing like a 
remote working desktop application. I'm wondering how how is is it gonna be in one or two years time? Because at the moment the source code of high fidelity is state of the art. I don't think you can get any better or more visionary, a more experimental, a more free idea of, of a virtual world system. But uh, if, if they now concentrate on desktop uh, and spatial audio, which is beautiful too, how big or not big is the chance that other platforms will surpass high fidelity? I, I personally don't think anyone will because um, unless it comes from like a progressive web app like hubs and they very quickly hustle on um, creating new technology to catch up. Um, but I mean, uh, whether or not High Fidelity is doing the right thing now, one thing that they did do right was to make the platform open source. And um, there are a lot of people, uh, me included, but a lot of others too, who are eagerly digging into the source code and exploring, um, you know, both community sponsored and open source as well as commercial opportunities to um, kind of make the best out of what High Fidelity has delivered so far. And I think probably in the next few years, we're going to see services and um, maybe forks or at least like a add-ons and extensions to the platform and enhancements that make it more, um, I don't know, more broadly appealing. Because right now the platform has, has suffered from being very, very technical and, and really needing, you know, kind of the perspective of a full stack web developer to leverage and, and do wild creative things mm -hmm. with it. And um, I think in the right hands, it's going to begin to change a bit, you know, in the, in the hands of the community. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if it will be become the dominant platform, um, but uh, I think it has a great future ahead of it just because of its its open nature. Um, there's really no one else can offer that. Awesome. Um, unless they they bring hubs Mozilla hubs up to um, up to standard, and, and that's not very technically sophisticated at, at all. So yeah. I, I I perhaps I'm gonna visit too. I uh, I did accidentally when they launched. I was like on my balcony scrolling through my Twitter feed, and somebody was like, "Hey, here's an invite to my hubs room," and I just clicked clicked like, "Okay, let's look at that. Let's make an account." And suddenly I was like in the room with two uh, friends of mine who were in VR, and I was on Twitter, and it was like. A blast, right on. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, for for me, I uh, yeah, one one of 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 of, of the uh, how do you say like uh, core uh, conditions is is a great avatar. It's like I I can't immerse into a virtual world or into a even a VR experience if I only see like uh, a wireframe of my two hands. That's uh, not what I think we are, uh, mac uh, how, I, how I think we are maxes out its potential. So I'm really happy that in High Fidelity we can make these avatars on our own. Like, uh, so anything you, you get uh, rigged as an FBX, you can um, package into a high fidelity avatar, but it, you should host it yourself, uh, preferably on Amazon S3 or uh, on DigitalOcean or whatever other services. And um, yeah, you can also like get great attachments for your avatar. So if I might just show that in the camera. So the customizability of, of the avatars is also really cool. So I show you what I do here. I go to, where's my inventory? Mm -hmm. Am I blind now? 
Yeah. <laughs> so this is also like a, an example of the high fidelity economy. That that's like our currency is high fidelity coin, which is a stable coin based on a um, smaller uh, blockchain run by the VR Blockchain Alliance. And uh, this is here. So maybe show you the marketplace too. So here we have a marketplace where people have put nice stuff on and get their coins all times and but I wanted to go to my inventory and put some jewelry on. So I did a nice blockchain collection because I was so intrigued by the whole idea. And so let's put that bracelet on. Yeah. So, that's and I need a necklace to go with it. So, oops, can we see all? Duck. Yay! So, that regarding the avatar customizability, so I can do that stuff my myself. Like, for example, this one I did in Gravity Sketch and pimped it in Blender and then brought it in as an FBX and I also uploaded it to the marketplace and made good coins there. Um, wha what else? How, how, uh, how did you get your avatar? Uh, my avatar? Mm -hmm. uh, well, this is a remix of an MMD avatar, which is, uh, you'll see a lot of them on like VR chat and increasingly mm -hmm. here. And these are avatars um, that were created by a community um, that likes to make virtual music videos with virtual characters uh, called Miku Miku Dance. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a huge community of people who make avatars that look sort of like this. They're kind of anime themed and um, like a really passion-driven community. Um, and they're all really fun and mostly well-made. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I took one of those community-made MMD avatars and then changed the colors around to this kind of purple and fuchsia combination to sort of take a little bit of ownership of it. So it's mm -hmm. kind of mine, uh, like at least to make it a little unique. Um, even though you could identify it and and um, and say, okay, that's an MMD, you know, Uka Miku yeah, avatar. But they all, I um, think they all have their, their special looks. Like this one is a Fuse-based avatar. And I think mm -hmm. you always can tell uh, where they're from. <laughs> an MMD too. Yeah, I love that one. And Maki's is one from a, I, like a, one thing I love about open source VR and about kind of this community driven VR is that we, there's a lot of remixing of assets and people kind of like liberate some of other, like if you're negative, you could say, oh, you're ripping and stealing content. But I like to look at it like people kind of claim some sort of creative ownership and take fun in sort of playing with IP and remixing IP and sort of this kind of remix culture. Like Maki, uh, who's on my shoulders, her avatar is um, uh, from um, the Yuri Yuri anime mm -hmm. series and a game from there. Um, and she's remixed it to create her own, her own version, which is uniquely her. I love that. And I, I just love how everyone here is sort of yeah. taking some kind of base of some sort, even if it's a fuse base. Yeah. And, uh, or, you know, as Piper has customized one of the default high fidelity avatars, um, or Iceman with a, a fuse one, like we've all managed to create something that's uniquely ours. And that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, for, for me, it was like a big help because I'm like a total side tracker. So <laughs> I, knew my film business software and mm -hmm. uh, but like to start from scratch was 
yeah, not not possible. Uh, but to have like this fuse avatar as a template, and then modify it and put like flow bones. By the way, we yeah. have flow bones here, um, which make your hair flow nicely. <laughs> so, so it was much easier to have like a working template of an avatar and then pimp it and change it and extend it and remix it. But I think like what's, what's very important to me as an artist who has to pay her rent to is um, I, I always put a lot of emphasis on it that um, remixing or, or taking stuff as a template is authorized by the creators. Mm -hmm. So I read in the Fuse uh, TOS that we can use these avatars. Nice. And I think with Miko Miko Dance, it's, it's similar that they are also fine if these avatars run yeah. around in, in the open. But I, I wouldn't want to go and whatever, even if I could rip off uh, whatever Elsa of Frozen. I, I wouldn't want to <laughs> do that to the <laughs> Disney artists. And what's that brings me to next, like, quite serious question, because maybe the, the, the big studios, okay, they don't... <laughs> they only lose like a fracture of their money if somebody rips off an Elsa avatar. But if you're like like a one woman, one man show uh, 3D artist, you're really uh, dependent on getting money, getting paid oh, yeah. for your art. So well, that's definitely not the same, is it? Um, I mean, and that's that's also one of the great things about about high fidelity in the marketplace, and also with Unity and the Asset Store, is it gives independent artists and you know a chance to get exposure, mm -hmm. and to make a name for themselves. And um, I mean, th those certainly aren't things that are in the popular culture. Um, and independent artists should really be empowered to make a living um, from their content. Uh, especially if the content is geared specifically for VR, you know. Um, so that that's one of the really cool things is that it's an opportunity to get original content into the ecosystem. Um, yeah. And to make a living from it. Th this is so, so amazing to have like this world with, within a world. Like, like people in real life often don't understand it if I... <laughs> Uh, tell them like okay i i sell avatar dresses <laughs> um yeah. so we we should really like stick together there but how is it about the ip the uh, copyright protection in in high fidelity how is that handled at the moment well, the only place where it's really enforced is through the marketplace, mm -hmm. high fidelity marketplace. And there is kind of a gating system that will um, kind of moderate the content that goes on to the marketplace. But being a free and wild open metaverse, the way that the, the World Wide Web is kind of free and wild in general, if you can put something on your server, it's your responsibility to deal with, you know, DMCA takedown requests if people send them to you. But you have that same degree of agency. And maybe, for example, you're hosting on a server out of the Netherlands or some other country, which uh, really puts the privacy and the rights of a, a server operator before that of, um, you know, of, of large companies, uh, like privacy centric places, they mm -hmm. might not even um, enforce that. So it's the exact same um, circumstances that you have in in hosting a website, really. I I see, but but I think this is still yeah like like I mean I'm I'm totally for decentralized systems for peer to peer, but this is like every system is like a two sided coin, and for me this this is like one of the flaws of 
not being centralized because if as i understand it if you if you have like a centralized architecture you upload your avatar there then the company encrypts it and uh, mm. nobody knows what to do uh, with the file even if they're able to rip it or am i wrong there <laughs> Oh, you're talking specifically about like hosting, about avatars being ripped from people who own them. I think that's, yeah, that's a huge problem. And uh, if you look at like VR chat users, that's one of their biggest complaints. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> and here in high fidelity to the, the ease with which someone can rip and um, like reappropriate someone's avatar. And not just in sense of like, hey, you're using my file or my set of data but you're presenting yourself as me. So like if someone took my, my you know, yeah, fuchsia yeah. and pink avatar yeah. and then others would recognize, or, you know, y your trademark style. Um, and right now, casual piracy, well, not piracy, but casual avatar ripping is, uh, is really easy to do on um, all the platforms, really. And um, having a secure way to, to, to kind of... Um, protect your your identity your avatar identity when you have a one-of-a-kind avatar that's something that a lot of people really want and it's uh something that um that i personally have been looking into and maki and i've been talking about ways to secure and and high fidelity themselves um even though they're sort of pivoting into this business oriented model they have been looking at uh a way to sort of certify avatar provenance and uh, mm -hmm. make it harder. So um, I think we'll see like options coming in the future. Certainly anyone who can crack that nut and solve that problem and make it really difficult to steal a, um, or rather get the, the file of someone's avatar that they really want to go out of their way to kind of protect the 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 server or the the service provider who can manage to figure that out will be at at a decided advantage and um they'll probably um be very successful <laughs> uh yeah um right now there's only one way to do it that's a hundred percent secure and that's simply to render everything on on your client and then shoot it off to the others and that's not at all practical currently but um but there's things that can be done just to make casual avatar piracy a lot harder so that you can't just run a simple little tool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and nab it. Yeah, that, that, that's good. If I, I think like, like a good hacker can probably rip everything, but yeah. if, if you just make it difficult enough for casual Hackers, yeah, as mm -hmm. you said, like, it shouldn't be just, just like, download that script and, and I mean, it, get them all. In a way, like, the, the fact that it's so hard to protect anything against um, being downloaded um, is one of the reasons that High Fidelity was so hands-off. Uh, you know, like, like an, uh, a complaint you'll hear a lot if you look back through the kind of the community conversations with the companies, a lot of people were like, well, why aren't you doing more to protect our, our files? And um, there's some truth to the fact that nothing can be protected 100%. Um, and I think from strictly a technical point of view, they were looking at it like, well, if we can't give people 100% protection, then we're not going to bother giving them a false sense of security. Um, and I, I disagree with this approach because I think there's a lot of things that can still be done. Like, like, even though someone can break into your house quite easily, we still have, have locks on our doors um, to help us sleep better at night, you know. Um, and similarly, um, I, I think yeah, adding measures to make it harder just to, to sort of reinforce socially that this is not acceptable. Yeah, in Germany, we have a saying, uh, Gelegenheit macht Diebe, which yeah. means like an opportunity uh, will create burglars. And mm -hmm. that, that's the same with the avatars. Like when I could look into the log files and see any uh, URL for any... Uh, 
avatar around me, uh, yeah, of course I'd rip them all. And probably everybody has a Philip Rosedale avatar in here. Um, <laughs> but the, m the minute you, you, you have to do more than just copy paste some links, yeah. you're also like more aware that, that you're doing something illegal. And I right. think this is like a, a great moral barrier also. Absolutely. Like, like I have to actively do something to break a law or to break a social norm. Um, like go out of my way beyond copying and pasting because heck, if it's allowed in the editor, then you think, well, okay, then there's nothing wrong with doing this. Um, but if you have to go out of your way to, um, to get tools or, you know, I mean, it's like breaking the door down to get in and, and you know, that that's not encouraged, <laughs> that that's actively discouraged and criminal. And I really also love uh, high fidelity's like different approach, which is the, the proof of provenance. Like mm. as soon as you upload something to the marketplace, you it gets checked if it works in high fidelity and then you get a proof of provenance certificate, which uh, shows like, you know, yeah. So here, if you can see that, if I click on that, it gets yellow. And here is a little eye I can click on. And, whoops. Okay, why is my certificate invalid? Then you see the invalid certificate, yeah. So, um, let's see, do we have something legal here? And who stole my avatar and doesn't have the flow script? <laughs> Papa, now, get yeah. back <laughs> into your avatar. <laughs> <laughs> so, up. Uh, where do I find a good proof of provenance <laughs> certificate? Now I'm, I'm like, I lost my track. Uh, let's see. Maybe if I click on my up. Mm. Nah, that doesn't work. However, like uh, if it works, you get like a wonderful proof of provenance certificate for the stuff which you have made, and it's also registered in the blockchain if somebody has allegedly bought that stuff and uh, is like a, a owner a, a by law and i think this is a very uh, good system especially for we are because we are is like copyright hell in the end because like uh, basically we social we are reaches everybody who is connected to the internet so you should clear the copyrights for all countries connected to the internet. And that's simply not possible because uh, like, like Netherlands, Germany, the States, UK, all have different copyright laws and all have different um, Verwertungsgesellschaften. Uh, how do you translate that? Distribution money collecting um, agencies. And and so for me, it would be awesome uh, if we might have like a a blockchain based copyright pool where I could just like go and say like, oh, I want these nice uh, silverfish, nice cat trees for for my. Yeah, uh, lava. Could you step back domain? Over, please, in the camera. This way, please. Thank you. Can I like? not maybe not only in high fidelity but general even if i want to put that on sensor can i just like transfer you some coins or i want to play uh Kenneth's latest uh guitar song and then it'd be nice if i could like pay him like automatically whenever somebody downloads that song to play it back as part of a vr party if Kenneth then would automatically get some money 
and so at the moment it's really i i really i want to pay people for for their art i want to pay for every little media piece i use in in my vr creation but sometimes it's it's just not possible if i want to if i want to pay fees for a song uh maybe a small band did i i have to look up the distribution company of every country so i'm all for like a globalized copyright system that would make things so much easier in social vr so okay uh never stop talking i learned from a guy who does radio um <laughs> uh, what else did i want to <laughs> do uh i wanted to show how great we can build stuff so this for example is uh, called the palace it, it's a domain hosted by kenneth and here yeah. everybody is an admin and has rest rights so if you're online Shall we? Uh, end up with so much weird crazy. Sh shall <laughs> we? Um, le let's build something in real time, and maybe change the camera angle because I love the space hey, I see Mike's real hot thing. thing. For okay, example, which you. we brought in. Sure, but I don't know how legal that is. And there's another one. Uh, yeah, and we got a T-Rex and a flying Rex. <laughs> and now let's all get into VR and uh, build some flowers. Sounds like fun. Whoops. Maybe a bit nearer. Okay, while the others are getting into VR, I'm going to show you what you can do in world building wise. So I open up my. Yeah, that's our ta tablet. This is our UI. And let's open up the shapes tool. And here it is. And what shall I build, guys? And girls. Mm, an electric penguin. Electric penguin? <laughs> <laughs> How is a penguin electric? Okay, let's. <laughs> let's. Whoop. Penguin. <laughs> let's start with a sphere. Torch that sphere. Look. Up. Hmm. Okay. Let's do another sphere for the head. Come here. Sometimes you have to talk nice to those tools to work. Oh, now I messed with this rocket. Okay. Hat. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. What could work as a mouse? Yep. So, color. Stretch. <laughs> Electric penguin. 
<laughs> In the making. Awesome. Up. A little bit smaller. <coughs> then. Lex. Okay, I'm lazy. <laughs> Does the Shapes have a, uh, app have a particular name? Because I can't find it. Um, not that I know of. Can't find it. I give up. It has been re responding more quick, but we're gonna get that. We're gonna get that penguin. It's penguin. looking penguiny. What's penguiny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Always. <laughs> Don't lean forward too hard. This is like the automatic youth protection. <laughs> I'm just looking very penguiny. Penguin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need some back thingy for the penguin. Let's get another sphere. Sphere? Nah. That's not, that's not a sphere. Oop. Okay, that might be like uh, my computer a bit heavy on the load. Somehow the who wants a who wants a cube? You want a cube? No. Mm. Um. I still need something for the head and for the... Okay. Okay, dear stream viewers, I... I am a bit tricked out with this... with this spectator cam, so maybe it's a bit much for my machine to run a stream and the spectator cam and the work tool at the same time. Mm. So bear with me if this is going to take a bit, but it's going to be an awesome thingy. So don't stop talking, guys. Don't stop talking. What do you want to know, dear viewers? Uh, so now you know that Chaos Princess is not multitasking. <laughs> queen. Uh, is this an AC or DC penguin? What's a ah? Uh, it's a high voltage. Uh, what's what, what what's what's changing current? I like changing current better. Oh yeah, that's that's AC alternating current. Oh, there's there's a penguin right here. Yeah, that's definitely alternating. Okay. Yeah. What? Nope. In in Europe, I've heard that penguins are are higher voltage than in the United States. Um, you have oh. to be a little more careful. <laughs> yeah, here they're mostly um, sweet. Okay, now it looks more like a bumblebee than a penguin. <laughs> I mm. see a penguin. I, when I took my electric penguin it's, to uh, to Europe, I had to get an adapter power adapter for it i have to confess that i have no clue what an electric penguin actually is well it's like a penguin <laughs> but electric it's like a, yeah it's like a normal penguin but with extra electrons so oops. 
Bear with me, dear stream viewers. We'll soon gonna see a wonderful penguin. And then we're gonna visit some cool domains. So, ice. Nice. These are very pretty flowers, Piper. But Thank you. Yoohoo! Flowers! Yay. Are the flowers in the frame even? Wait. What? Those are really cool. Oh, I like how the penguin has a little beret. <laughs> yeah, yeah there was like like it it looked Bonjour, so uh, so bald without the beret, but I actually have no yeah. clue what they have on the head. Those penguins. Hello, mon ami. We could say a French penguin instead of an electric penguin, and then it's done. Yeah, yeah, it's a French penguin. <laughs> <laughs> Although you know what he needs to be really French is he needs a baguette. A what? Ah, ooh, okay. Une baguette. So, you know, like a loaf of bread. Okay. And, and one of those little bicycles. <laughs> oh, you need to give me a cigar. <laughs> so Big I'm cigar. I'm happy with uh, yeah, penguin. And we can even have more penguins. <laughs> now it gets super easy. This is what I prefer in VR to real life. Let me just find my clone tool. Where's my clone tool? And one more penguin. And even one more penguin. And even more penguins. Uh, this one is. So I'm gonna cramp this picture with penguins. Ooh. And did I crash? These are the parts of the stream we call authentic. So let me find my spectator cam. And what did I want to do? I wanted to show you. Oops. Okay, so this is Piper nursing a penguin. This is tons of penguins, flowers, and I wanted to show my login ritual. So what do I do when I enter high fidelity? Because now I bet my hair doesn't look like I like it. My hair is still electrified. So I go to menu, edit, running script. And here I got my chaos flow script at now magic's gonna happen. One, two, three, reload script. And my hair is beautiful again. <laughs> yes, so and <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> do you see something? No, you don't see me do my, my kickboxing and showing off my beautiful <laughs> boots, which I did in Google Blocks. This is why I should be calibrating. So I go to controls, calibration, feet, hips, hips, and now you gotta see that. Now I go to apply and calibrate and do the Jesus. Calibration failed. This is because my trackers aren't turned on. So, good idea to turn them on. So, calibrate. <laughs> Yay! Look, I even made a... a the, the downside of my soul. <laughs> Because that's that's I another great thing about High Fidelity is it's the only virtual world platform that lets you do full body 
calibration so easily, even though that wasn't necessarily easy. That is a million times easier than doing it in VR chat. Is it? Because I, I oh had my the God, feeling yeah. that in, in, in VR chat it was uh, it was plug and play uh -huh. last time I No, uh, in VR, VR chat to like set up your full body tracking you have to do it actually outside of VR chat and do all of your calibration very carefully using an external tool. So the fact that you can do it inside high fidelity is pretty cool. Even though it's not it has some like some rough edges, you know, and you yeah, can't really like yeah. save your calibration data. It's uh, it goes a lot faster. Okay, maybe maybe uh, because what what I experienced was, and I wanted to research that that uh, so so in VR chat um, it was like when you entered your home world, you should just like stand there like that, get into like some oh. uh, T pose avatar which was like standing there and do oh, the same okay. and then like pull the triggers and then you were calibrated with everything oh so they must have introduced a new feature new way to do it but then. the um. problem was that when, uh, whatever i did the avatar would work like that and, okay um and and uh, then i tried like like how do i get like straight legs when i'm standing up so i tried like to do the tracking like like that and then stand up but it didn't do the trick and now i'm wondering if the avatars there might have like a certain fixed height which i uh don't apply to so, so we're gonna find that out when we visit yeah you, you know, i was gonna say you could have uh, probably toggled seated play in the options and that might have done that <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. See, the play is the first thing I shut off. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no, I need my tracking. But, uh, I, are you in VR chat more often? You Am should... I in VR chat? I mean, I kind of stopped doing VR stuff since <laughs> I don't have a headset lately. Ah, but... <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a tour through, through VR chat also. Okay, so we are back on stream, and the stream is even colorful on Twitter. That's nice. Um, what shall we do now? We covered avatars in world building. Let's go domain hopping. Shall we have a look at Get Started? Sure. Let's get started now. <laughs> <laughs> so here and to teach everybody using high fidelity you go to go to and I'll see you all later have a good night good night thank you for for taking along oh, this and here we have get started so i just triggered <laughs> Yay! We made it! We made it! And uh, now, now I'm gonna do something which, which I learned from The Flash. The Flash is the most amazing DJ and graffiti artist from Canada. So this is the beautiful Get Started. And this domain, Caitlin and Marky put up. So when High Fidelity shut down all their servers, we needed some new place for new people to come in. And within a week, Maki and Caitlin created this wonderful place. And now I'm gonna go behind the camera because this is a better view. This Hi. is such a beautiful domain. Thank you. Yeah, we run this domain off of a, a server that we've got um, to be co so it's sort of associated with the Federated Hi-Fi users, which is our kind of unofficial Federated user community. And um, we've created this to be sort of a place where people can maybe meet new users and hang out 
and find resources and avatars, um, as well as just provide kind of a general purpose uh, gathering space. Super. Yeah, and um, this domain, uh, this is actually based on a room, on a building in New York City that was created by, um, well, the model was created by a company called Archaeologic. Um, and they created this lovely uh, interior for actually originally for high fidelity. Wow. Um, wow. <clears throat> but uh, I've sort of reappropriated it and found it. It's, it's a very candy space. Um, yeah, it has uh, these lovely outdoor areas. Yes, um, yes. That's it, why I was just like switching the camera around. Like, look at that. See a giant Philip Rosedale second line. Yeah, I was looking for. for Philip, okay, let's do Looming the zoom the on giant Philip Rorister. One second. Just waiting to come Godzilla-like and step on all uh, of us. Although I don't think that's what he wants to do. Nah. <laughs> Not at all. Um, uh, but here he is, our beloved Philip. Yeah. And then over here, we have links to other domains which we host through... Mm -hmm. um, so Maki and I are collectively call our creative endeavors cute lab and we also have a domain called cute lab and we have uh, five other domains that we run on cute lab servers over here so if you come to get started if you're a new high mm -hmm. fidelity user and come to get started you can find um our uh six spaces that we run here um some of which are originals like Cute Lab, Portalarian, and Silence. And then three are um, domains that High Fidelity used to run for artists, but they kind of um, stopped hosting for them. So I, uh, oh, that's so as cool. a former High Fidelity employee who had worked with these people, I offered to provide them a home. So you can also find uh, Tank's Corner uh -huh. um, by Tank, which is a really cool cyberpunk bar. And Astral Space by um, the architect, who's a, uh, a popular VR chat builder and created a world here, uh, as well as MakerBox, which is uh, kind of a revival of the old high fidelity domain maker. Oh, yeah, that, that was the oh. original sandbox maker. Yeah, that was that was my baby once. Mm. But um, and Portalarium is uh, my personal domain up there in the top left corner. And Cute Lab is Maki and uh, and mine, our little collaboration home. And uh, so is Silence, which is kind of a moody space. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all fun places to visit if you want to yeah. go to any. It's, it's so great that you can have like a domain for, for every mood you're in. Like sometimes you mm. want something like really wild then you go to to one of the building spaces or, or one of the party areas or if you want to have like something to relax silence is really a good good place and it's so so great what what we are can do you to your emotions just by by yeah being in a different place and i remember when when you always read about what we are about the cool things we all can do like like that they use it uh, to calm like burning victims when they have their bandages oh, yeah. exchanged and then but it was like two weeks ago it and it was so freaking hot in munich like i was melting i had like my ventilation thingy on here and mm -hmm was 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 uh, like like a second away from buying a, in an ac but uh, then um somebody put up a ice domain which had like lots of snow and ice cases <laughs> and suddenly i i really i my my sweating almost vanished i, I <laughs> didn't <laughs> need as uh, lots of uh, dio spray or whatever <laughs> so that, wa that was an amazing experience. I love it. So where, where are the avatars? Because before we hop on, I, I'd love to uh, also show the avatars, which we have like Pretta Party. 
Oh, you know, okay, they they are over here in the Mochi domain, but that is unfortunately offline at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, but when that's back up, you'll... Actually, you know what? A great place to find avatars. If you are a high fidelity, if you're going to come to Hi-Fi and try it out, come to get started and click on this sign here <clears throat> that says Fox Essentials. Uh, Fox yes. Essentials yes. is a helper yes. application that uh, Maki, who's on my shoulders, and she's an incredible yes. programmer and designer. And in there is a... Um, there's a whole bunch of tools and applications that make using high fidelity a lot more palatable. Wait, I um, get, of course, I get this. Fox Essential is like the most essential app you can run. It's the best. It's absolutely the very you best. Have and, to have it. So you and will looking see at it. Fox Essentials, like it really demonstrates the potential of the platform. Even though high fidelity feels pretty dead right now, and there's people who are upset that it doesn't work the way they want it to. Um, the fact is that it is extremely scriptable, and it remains that way, uh, so that someone like Maki or anyone else can go um, and create a new experience, a, a new user interface, um, or sets of tools to make life a lot better. Um, like, you really could take high fidelity and, um, with a bit of scripting and design skills, make it into a completely different experience. And Fox Essentials was an effort to, to create something that, um, that gave a lot of people who, um, who had wanted and asked for things but wasn't getting them, like, to, to deliver those features. So, uh... But back to avatars, there's an avatar section in Fox Essentials. Yeah, I just scrolled through that for the camera. Oh yeah, and there's also a, uh, a list of destinations of worlds, although I think they're yeah. updating. Yeah, yeah I, I showed updating. that too, so at the moment I'm at the apps section. And so yeah. for example, Maki did great uh, name tag scripts or Check out the avatars. Have you have you gone, th gone through them? Yes. Okay. And you'll find uh, MMD avatars. You'll find all kinds of scripts and shortcuts and, and helpful tools. It's really cool. So. Yeah, in the end, maybe it's it it it's. Uh, I think it's it's even a good thing that the Hi-Fi isn't let, like like that the virtual world section isn't let anymore by like super corporate interests so it's it's a really nice nice wild west feeling yeah and it, it gives a lot of of chances to to creative minds all all around the world mm -hmm. so um i just see oh we are already streaming more than an hour wow we are good. Wow. How how about uh, having a quick look at tanks bar, and then I need your help for my final comparison chart. Okay. <laughs> yeah, to tanks. I'm, I think the best way to get there is just to click the board here. Yeah, let's do that. Just Wait. click the tanks corner button. Uh, oops. I just oh, take my camera working? near to me. So. Here it's Tanks Corner, and I'm like the biggest Blade Runner fan of them all. That's why I love that place. So, here we are arriving in Tanks Corner. Everybody's loading in. Oh! <gasps> and I almost Yay, lost my tanks. camera. Yeah. So this is Tank's Corner, an amazing Blade Runner styled bar done by Thomas Pasieska, I think he's called, who is a great 3D artist. So Oh, this is so wonderful. Yay! This is my favorite build in High Fidelity. Soy calf. Soy calf. Mm, and Skittles! Soy calf and, and vodka. Uh, and 
And now I remember that I'm a smoker. Nah. <laughs> no. Oh no. Ah, and I'm happy the stream runs again. Let's, but let's find my spectator cam once again. Ah, yes. So now we can have like a nice uh, picture at that wonderful bar. Yeah. What you want to have? I'll have a <laughs> bleach and Skittles, please. <laughs> Let's throw Excuse stuff me, at the camera. Uh oh, there's a new Ganda Knuckles here. Oh, and by the Look way, out. we have like fantastic physics in high fidelity. Like it's, uh, I I seldom yeah. found like like also like from standalone VR experiences something which comes as close. <laughs> and I could stand like here for hours throwing stuff at the camera. <laughs> Or what I also like is the riding that horse there. So <coughs> in VR you have like really great <laughs> photo abilities. Rolling, 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 rolling. Oh, wow, I love that place. So. Me too. And it has great music too, doesn't it? That, this is a bit turned down for me, but, but that's maybe uh, not the worst for, for the stream to still... Um, like uh, get my voice <laughs> or our voices through so my weird <laughs> gymnastics now is to actually like get a beer which I have in my hand now put it <laughs> under the headset mm. and drink because in a bar you have to drink cheers once again <laughs> cheers mm. do, 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 do. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much for showing this. Mm -hmm. Would you like to follow me to my domain so that we can get like the final uh, big bot yeah. wrap up? Because I really need let's your help. Do it. To Chaotica? Yeah, let's go Chaotica. All right. Are you going to follow go. us? Oh, and we're going to tip Tanks Corner. Here, these are these tip jars, so you can show your appreciation by tipping people, which is also very nice. But now we want to go back to my home in my home world, which is Chaotica. Hi, Chaos. Hello. Hello. Oh, great that you're here. Yay. This looks cool here. I love your shaders. Ah, thank you. I think you brought them in originally. It's like a uh, fractal shader. I might have brought this one or Maki or the two of us. Yeah, it's Somewhere really cool. I found that in the metaverse and I had to add this because I'm such a fractal fan. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what I love about that is like it's so uh, like wild and fast over here. Mm -hmm. oh but yeah. it got like this this sweet spot, and this is like like the right. middle of a of a kaleidoscope. And I yeah, could like right here stand here like on that sweet stop spot for hours and just look just at it. Scan the eye of God. Get into <laughs> trance or flow or whatever. You need less weed. <laughs> uh, didn't say that. Um, <laughs> okay, let's jump down here because I prepared something. Ooh. <laughs> and whoever saw my tests, what 
which I did, now gets the chance to see the back of that famous frame thingy here. Yoohoo! So, and now I need Caitlin's and Marky's help for filling Ready. all in all the tech specs. Oh my goodness. Okay. And I prepared using the shapes app, I prepared these emojis <laughs> which I'm going to put to each uh, section. But we have to be fair. So how does this work? Do we just tell you our... Ah, I'm just going to find a nice uh, camera angle. Okay. Whoops. Okay, now, now the, the camera perfectionist comes through. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So I like that one. And a bit wider. Da, da, da. That was the wrong direction. That looks fine, don't it? Um. Oh yeah, it does. I'm looking at your stream. Why is my shadow still there when I'm here? No, that's your shadow. Okay. But where are you? Mm -hmm. Ah! There's Caitlin, and I can only see her shadow. I'm, I'm Marky. Right here. <laughs> so how does this work, Chaos? Okay, we start off with the specifications. So I'm okay. gonna get out my finger paint and I'm gonna get out my hair of the heads under the heads <laughs> and um, fill this in. Where's my... F okay, now I'm gonna weird everybody out because like, my hair is under the headset and that's ticklish. <coughs> So now it doesn't look so weird anymore. Um, Okay, let's start. Which platforms is High Fidelity running on? Um, Hi-Fi runs on Windows, Mac. Um, some people stop, have stop, stop. managed to get Windows. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Windows? Windows and Mac. And uh, some people have had it kind of running on Linux. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, now there is an, it's very janky, admittedly, but there is an Oculus Quest and Android version. Ooh, OK. Um, I'm still at Linux. Not so fast. Yeah, take your time. <laughs> That's like in school. Maybe you're going to need a shorthand for these. <laughs> but yeah, Windows, Mac, Linux, and then Android. And there's a special, because Quest is Android, there's a special Quest version as well. Uh. Um, and I don't know how much it's improved since the, uh, the latest 
version that they'll be releasing hopefully this month, but um, apparently there's going to be significant optimizations in there. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, those are the, the primary oh, my hand if my handwriting is a little readable oh my goodness that required? looks like my my school folders verse oh yeah it does it a used trick. to require a pretty hardcore graphics engine or a, um gpu but um as part of their effort mm -hmm. to create this business product a big thing that they're trying to do is make it work better on lower end graphics displays like yeah your computer has yeah. for example a crappy intel onboard graphics system so we might see um the platform become a lot more usable um to people without high-end windows machines um, and to mac users as just a side effect because while a lot of people feel like high fidelity has you know pivoted away from their open source community vr the the truth is is that we as in the um the community actually get to benefit from the improvements that they make to the platform anyway like these are coming into the open source version so we might we likely will find better performance on cool you know, across the board and cool. better stability. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I think this this is really really good. I I was pondering if I should put in like the what GPU, what CPU, uh, what RAM do you need uh, specs? Because I want to do that board yeah. for all the um, virtual worlds I'm gonna visit. But well, you know, I would honestly suggest coming back to to do a special version on high fidelity, like two versions down the road. Yes, yeah. they've launched their product because I think we're going to see dramatic new changes to the platform over the next like um, couple of months, actually, or uh, definitely by by fall. Yeah, th so, this is um, exactly my plan. Like now, I want to do like the tour, like like. With it, like one one virtual world every week or every two weeks, and mm -hmm. then like hopefully like start and finish this whole series with with high fidelity and see how it how it evolved. And maybe by then, hopefully, we'll we'll have a more solid high fidelity. Yeah, yeah, and th this was the thing because uh, I decided against uh, putting on the what GPU do you need? Like, I think it's a 980 minimum um, because, yeah, optimization, I think, is like the trend word and the, the way to go this year to, to make VR more accessible also for, for people with lower end machines. So let's oh. fill in some more. Uh, what HMDs is it running on? Of course, oh, we well have all the of the Windows. Wonderful wipes. Yeah, anything that you can run with Steam. So mixed reality, Vive, Rift. Um, Oculus, Rift, Rift S. Rift. Yes. What else do we have? Okay. Windows MR, it's abbreviated, right? Mm-hmm. Windows MR. Um. Hey, and I even got the Pimax running. Oh yeah, Pimax. Mm -hmm. That gets a special heart from me. Do you? Are you happy with your Pimax? I love, love it. it. Don't you? I absolutely adore it. Oh. I, I want to fly out to Munich it. and try yours. Come to Munich, visit shortly. me. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you never want to. Uh, but but the problem is now now I went went back for 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 the stream. I went back to the Vive because mm -hmm. um, the tracking is better and I uh, and I still s in in some haze and shadow employing domains. I got problems with a with a dis display like like fancy stuff. Um, doesn't render in the right corner of my right eye and although oh, oh right mm -hmm. although i wouldn't see that with a wife but with this big field of view it's it's a bit distracting so that's why for the stream i went went back on the wife but after wearing the pimax for like 10 minutes mm -hmm. the wife seems like tiny little binoculars it's like uh, wow. as if you would go back to a siemens 25 as a mobile phone from an iphone so <laughs> i absolutely love 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 the pimax which uh for the stream viewers is a great headset like a kickstarter record from china and it got like a 200 or 190 degree point of view uh, field of view and amazing resolution uh, yeah. the 8KX that's coming out pardon? the 8KX yeah, yeah, yeah a friend of mine is getting that one but he's still waiting I got the 5K plus I'm waiting on that one <laughs> Ooh, cool. wow. then I have to visit you <laughs> okay, let's get on. Um, did did I forget a headset? Vive Rift S Window. Oh, I forget a W. Wait. <laughs> Win. Windows MR Pimax. Uh, the index, but for valves. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. The the. No, the Vive. Yeah, yes, yes, the Wolf Index. Does it run already on Hi-Fi? Um, the Index. I think that I think that it does, but I I don't think the Knuckles controllers for them are working yet, are they? Mm. But but Wolf Index is is uh, confirmed that somebody wore that in here. I think so. Oh, um, yeah, Nova Joan. Nova Joan has. Ah, one. cool. Okay, so Valve Index is confirmed. And how about the Vive Focus? Uh, according to Philip Rosedale, uh, it works well, but we haven't seen it yet. Okay, we believe Philip. Yeah. Five. I'll hail the creator. <laughs> hmm? Pun? <laughs> I love Philip, but we don't need to give him more ego stroking. <laughs> I love him very much, though. <laughs> hey, you yes. might look back at the, st at the stream. Be careful what you're saying. Oh, I think he would agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up. Good accessories. So I know that we can get the wife trackers, which is like the most important accessory for me. Yeah, the wife trackers. There's so much you can do with them. I I can't I live without them. <laughs> it's really like 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 when I'm when the trackers don't work, my legs hurt, and I can't look at my elbows because my elbows are the only pieces of my body which aren't really tracked. And it really like like if I do like this duck dance movement and see my elbows not going up with my real life elbows, it really hurts my muscles here. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's a good 
side, but that's also the problem with the fancy VR gear, that once you use it, you get like addicted. I believe we also have, um, or we, High Fidelity also supports the largest number of simultaneous trackers that you can use. I think in VR chat, you can have three or four. Wow. And I believe in Hi-Fi, you can have seven or eight. Oh, that's awesome. I think. At least it used to be that way. I don't know if I'm quoting out old figures here, but. Um... Wow. What else do we have? Uh, face tracking? Yes, no, uh, maybe well, again. Before? Yeah, yeah, there is. And in fact, uh, in HiFi's new product, there's going to be face tracking as a feature. There's also support for like the neuron um, suit, uh, space navigator, although it's a little janky. There was uh, support for um, the leap. What? what, what, what the, uh, moment? The, the I'm still at face tracking. Sure. Okay. face tracking. Then the new, new, new one. Okay, whoever owns it, their heart will jump, right? You said something about like a product, like when they release their product. Oh, uh, yeah, High Fidelity is working on this new product, which is going to be their, I don't know, they're calling it Lilypad tentatively, like their, uh, their, their business platform that is their, their pivot. Like a special conferencing tool? <laughs> not up to date on this? Where have you been? No, yeah. I've been done for like three or four months. Yes, the company is pivoting away from general purpose open source VR to a proprietary um, system that's kind of like virtual office spaces, um, which isn't a bad idea, but it does fly entirely in the spirit of what I think a lot of us signed up to do for those of us who worked on, on High Fidelity. Um, uh, so I don't, I don't know. Um, they are at least getting kind of serious about making it stable. And there's, there's certain optimizations and design decisions which will trickle down and benefit the open source platform which we're using. And they've committed to continuing maintaining this open source version. I, I don't know. You know, I'm sure that there's a sincerity there in that, although I, I don't know how, how, how much will be invested in it, honestly. I'm hoping that they'll continue to be quite serious about it. Um, but definitely they've shifted away from the original plan, uh, which is a bit of a bummer, uh, to be honest. But again, you know, the software is open source meaning that there is opportunity for yeah. um, you know for entrepreneurs to uh, to leverage the the platform and make marketplaces and services and um, actually make something out of it i mean there's okay. there's all kinds of hand wringing that's going on right now and a lot of people who are very negative about it and but but really um we have to regard this as opportunity, as a time of opportunity. Absolutely. Um, even though some of us feel betrayed, even perhaps by these decisions, it's still, this is what is being served. <laughs> and it remains that the platform is built on very good ideas and that it is open and just waiting for us to, um, to leverage it and make something amazing from it. And so, you know, it's built on this philosophy of having a, a distributed and decentralized metaverse. Yes. And they can't take that away, um, even if they become slack, you know, for, for, for offices and virtual, virtual office spaces. It's like these opportunities are, are still here for us. 
I really hope that this uh, remote um, working app gives them great revenue, which they can invest into new cool VR features. <laughs> yeah, that that's my utopia dream. I don't know. I I honestly think though that to have the the utopia metaverse. It's not something that's going to be centralized by a single company. Like, if we want, I mean, look at the internet, right, and the World Wide yeah, Web wrapper, yeah, and, and yes. how that emerged. Yes, yeah. It wasn't AOL who made the internet great, or made the World Wide Web great. It wasn't. It wasn't some huge monolithic company. It wasn't Microsoft. It wasn't GeoCities. It wasn't Google back, especially back in the early days. Um, you know, it wasn't even like Netscape or Mozilla or, um, e e you know, it wasn't Ask Jeeves. It wasn't all of these, these services. It was us. Um, likewise, the metaverse, I mean, while it will probably be built on technology that Hi-Fi has contributed and their research, um, you know, and, and invention and innovation, it's really got to come from us um, to, to create something that's truly like wild and, um, and open and distributed. So, you know, like you could look at high fidelity as stewards and um, sort of as like gift givers in a way mm -hmm. of this platform, mm -hmm. but they're not going to do it for us at all. And if you're expecting High Fidelity, the company, to deliver a metaverse, you probably will be disappointed. What they're going to deliver is the software, and the metaverse is up to us. I, I, I think it's, it's great if they just concentrate on like the, the core software. Like, yeah, that, that's a whole... Let's host 500 avatars in one non-instant space, spatial audio, that this whole system is, is working flawlessly. That, that's really, a yeah, yeah uh, the m also the most important field of research. Um, but I still think that in order to, to found like a real virtual world, and a real society and enable people, artists to, to make money and make a living. I think you need some wealth or at least good funded institution yeah. or company. Sure. And there'll be a multitude of them. I think, I think there hopefully. will, I think just like, Hopefully, There's yeah. a, a lot of companies making money on the web right now. Uh, I think we'll see a lot of, you know, VR based companies emerge that uh, leverage this technology or technology really similar to it um, to do that. Um, either using high fidelity or using something else, but hopefully using the, uh, the groundbreaking work that they did at HiFi. Yeah. To, to accomplish that. Just like you look at who's making money today on online and you can look at people making money from avenue, um, from advertising, but you can also look at like Steam and Epic Games and you can look at the Unity Asset Store and eBay and all of these places where institutions are, are making big money. Um, I think that same diversity of opportunity will become available. I I truly hope so, and I hope so that this is also going to happen, like based on the high fidelity code, because yeah, I I couldn't imagine a more amazing platform with uh, yeah, also like all that weird experimental uh, implementations and and this enormous creative freedom it gives you it gives you also a big mm -hmm. hassle because you always have to run behind some nerds to do the scripts for you but uh, <laughs> everything is possible in here and so it, it it would be great if high fidelity could persist as 
one virtual world of the whole metaverse. Mm -hmm. I hope so. I hope so. Um, yeah. Well, you help me a bit more with our chart. <laughs> Absolutely. So I was here, uh, I stopped at the Neuron Suite. Or, or what, what mm -hmm. is it? The Neuron? Yeah, the Perception Neuron. Ah, oh yes, I heard about that one. Ah, uh, okay. Perception Well, anybody who owns one will be happy when they read Neuron. What, what else was there at with cool uh, accessories. Was it Magic Leap? Uh, Magic Leap? I don't know. If, I don't think we've ever had Magic Leap running on it. Okay. Uh, but definitely Quest. And then there were a lot of like other kind of oddball experimental things. We had eye tracking working for a, a while. We had a uh, like a Vive, or I'm sorry, a, uh, no, an Oculus DK2 that had been modified. And this was back in 2015 had been outfitted yeah. with an eye tracker. Wow! Because of the nature of high fidelity, it was uh, possible to add support on there. So HiFi was the first social VR platform to have proper eye tracking. Um, okay, let's put that in there because that's when. some code which could be resurrected even if it's not. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it probably will be with the new platform. Um, there's also... Um, uh, oh, sorry. Yes, please. Uh, there's also support for um, 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 um. Sorry. Uh, yeah, face tracking through. Um, well, at least there was face tracking through your webcam mm -hmm. that could actually track and reproduce your facial expressions. I think that's coming in the new product as well. Um. And a bunch of other other devices that people had tinkered with and experimented with, but those are the big ones. Cool, awesome. <laughs> cool. Okay, engine is what? What's so the technique? Yeah. Hi-Fi. Hi one of the cool things about Hi-Fi is that it was written in C plus plus, so it's not using an engine like Unity or something out of the box, which. Um, it's written with a, a framework called Qt or Qt, and mm -hmm. uh, it uses OpenGL. Um, Qt, these are like yeah. the nerds terminal uh, termini technici. Right. <laughs> a lot of people call it Qt, but it's actually called Qt. Qt OpenGL. Now I got to trust you because I'm a non-coder. Sure. So. Oh. But those are the big technologies behind it, really. Pen. Cute and OpenGL. Whoop. G. Like that? Mm-hmm. Cool. And our scripting language is JavaScript. Um, yes, with JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So that that's the and cool thing powerful. that 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 even if you're a total non-coder like I am, you can get your head around a bit around JavaScript and can put in like or at least copy paste co script <laughs> lines and get all kinds of nice stuff uh, enabled. So boop, let's put a nice JavaScript here. Um, okay, we are open source. Yes. And Not. for the most part, decentralized. Yoo 
Am I biased? Yes, I'm biased. Whoop. <laughs> yeah. Good. Let me see. Can I get rid of the finger paint now? Because I think. Is there anything else to write down? Do you see anything? Well, yes, what's one pun? Yeah? Go ahead. What are you saying? One last thing. What's the maximum users per instance oh we can gosh. get in? We've had, okay, and this is one of the great things about High Five is we've had something like 450 people in a domain at the same time. No one has done that. And the reason you can do this with high fidelity is because of the fact that we're not just reusing a game engine, but HiFi was written to be a, uh, a metaverse engine designed specifically to do things like that, which is kind of crazy. Um, so uh, so that's, that's really one of the cool things about it. And that's why I think this platform has a future because you can make something that looks lovely and has 20 people in it and is fun, fun kind of like VR chat, you know, and maybe that's enough. But if you want to have a ton of people in the same space at the same time with a real sense of presence, yeah, uh, nothing yeah. can beat high fidelity. Yeah. And, um, I and, and, and I think that's eventually going to be a ceiling that these other platforms hit and they will not be able to, uh, to progress beyond. And at that point, I think that's, that's where Hi-Fi is really going to show yes. Hi, Maki, come back. Yeah, I, I, um, I still remember that the crowd in front of the Thomas Dolby stage at Multicon. Mm -hmm. was amazing. And this was like, I mean, I was in my living room. <laughs> and I really felt as if I was in like a big stadium concert. Yeah. That was so cool. That was crazy. I was there at that concert on Thomas Dolby's side. I was with him at the studio where he was performing, helping him set up and perform. And we wow. had five trackers on his hands. And he had a real keyboard in front of him with computer and HMD on his forehead. And it was an amazing performance. And I was doing the lights uh, for the stage cool. with the MIDI controller. <laughs> it was so cool. It's so, so, so who hasn't uh, seen it on Twitter? Uh, it was an event called uh, Multicon. And uh, this one, this wasn't Multicon. This was, was um, this was a different event. It was, or was it Futurelands? Futurelands, yeah. Okay. Futurelands VR. And this yeah. was like, like High Fidelity built this awesome nature psychedelic domain it was really cool. and we had like thomas dolby like a big stars of the 80s she blinded me with silence, with silence. Wave royalty um he he performed live and and it, now it, as you tell it we're like doing the lights with a meaty light but it's it's so so much like real life uh, mm -hmm. like like from the how you organize an event, but also how you enjoy an event. I think there's no difference between the, these two rea realities to me. It was just like a real concert. And that was in his words too. Uh, Thomas Dolby, he was just like, yeah, this was just as stressful as any other concert <laughs> I've performed at. Well, I've got to go, uh, actually Maki and I have a, a very cyberpunk thing to do and we, we have to go watch Blade Runner. <laughs> huh? Okay, wow, well, so, in the cinema? Uh, uh, no, actually, we're going to watch it online, but we, we, we need to, to go. Which um, cut? With some friends. The but, director's um, thank cut? Thank you or? so much, the director's cut, of course. Cool. So yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you yeah. both so much. That's really, yeah, really wonderful. And congratulations on your first episode. Oh, thank you. I'm sure it will be the first of many really good ones. So Now I'm <laughs> blushing. That's good that it doesn't show in Yay. VR. <laughs> so have fun okay. watching Blade Runner. 
and Thank I'm you. gonna be my one woman show here. Thank you so okay. much for telling Mwah. us everything about Hi Fi and thank you so much for be both for being our fairies of hope in oh. the high fidelity oh. metaverse. Oh. And maybe later on I can tell you about some of the things I'm working on in a future episode if you want. I've got a couple of things are going on in my own domain. Awesome. Um, yeah, you're already booked for the <laughs> like like once I I, I travel the whole circle. <laughs> then for come the, back uh, and we'll talk about like, what like I'm doing. This was like the premiere and you're booked for the dernier. Oh damn right. Okay. That's perfect. like the party they have when they close down <laughs> an exhibition. <laughs> I love it. But not oh, not the so Dania of High Fidelity, only the Dania of the stream series, the which series. is just starting. <laughs> so this is a premiere. <laughs> Yay. So have fun. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Mwah. Maki, are you still online? Nope. Okay. Ooh, then we are all alone and I'm still streaming. Um and my plan types do work when I do my microphone right. So I'm gonna um, do the rest of my infotainment chart. Let's get a better picture. So I wanna do this chart for, for like all virtual worlds I wanna visit so that in the end, we have some good uh, comparing sheet. And yeah, my handwriting <laughs> hasn't become better since I left school. But um, let's get on with the emojis I actually made. And what's, who's that? Somebody's visiting me. Come to the camera, I'm on a live, we're on a live stream. Let's find out. Hey, darlings, really, come here. We're on a live stream. Hmm? My friend doesn't have. On a live, live stream? Yeah, live on Twitter. My first nice. live stream. Nice job. So, so I wanna, I wanna visit like all the virtual worlds, and in the end, have like, like a comparison chart. And now you come actually really good for putting on those emojis. So let's turn on the shapes up. And <coughs> so we were talking about avatar creation, which um, let me do that beautiful avatar and let people get ev everything they imagine in here and also experiment with cool um, skeletons and stuff. And we have these amazing flow bones and we can touch each other. So I think the avatar creation definitely earned like a smiling emoji. Let's get one here. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Don't fly through the board. So uh, are you only evaluating high fidelity on this board? Um, uh, for 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 this is like the premiere of the um of the stream series. So at the moment it's only hi-fi, and I crashed. So I'm gonna start high fidelity as soon as possible. Yay! Yay! And let's fill that in in POV. I I try to to be um, calm so that people can read something. 
So let's give the shapes tool another try because I need this to clone those um, emojis. So okay. So I think avatar customizability with all of the fancy hats and jewelry and dresses you can make definitely needs a smiling green or cool emoji. What I also put into the comparison chart was that thing avatar POV, which you can see here quite nice. So I can see my own hands and my own body. And I could see my own feet, but I haven't adjusted the tracking yet. I'm going to show that to you later. But this is something which I just need for the immersion. I'm, I'm like, I want to see my body so that I can feel it. And it gives me phantom sensations. And that's why I'm like, yeah, please, platforms, whenever you have some resources free, put it into making your own body visible. Mm -hmm. So this one gets a smiley too. Okay. S. Yeah, this, th I, th I think this is all like the green section, which I really all love a lot. So I love mm -hmm. what I showed you here. The involved building that using the shapes tool or the finger paint app, you can basically do really nice stuff in, in real time. And also the world creation is uh, wonderful. I mean, look at that. That's my home domain. The sky above the port has the color of television tuned to a dead channel. And I even got a sun, which should be moving but it's late, so the sun is tired, but did that one in tilt brush. And yeah, the sky is the limit, or your imagination is the limit. You can bring in whatever you want. So mm -hmm. another green smiley thingy for the world creation. Um, where else do we have when I'm like here with a green? What I really like mm -hmm. is the locomotion. So as you can see, I can fly. And sorry, I have to calibrate myself. I can't live without my my feet <laughs> not tracking, even if it's only the shadow. One second. Let's calibrate that body. Did I switch them on? Probably not. No. <laughs> Let's switch these trackers on. Much better! You can see that! Shadow place! Yay! Okay, so now I feel much better. Um, okay, we wanted to fill in our board. So, what else gets such a green thingy? Dup. So, yes. As I said, I really love the locomotion. I can fly, I can smooth turn, I can clone by mistake. Um, locomotion is fantastic, as are the physics. No, my clone tool is gone. Whoop. As are the physics, she said, and desperately tried to get her clone tool to work. Mm -hmm. So remember all that stuff we threw at the camera in Tank Spa? Wasn't that amazing? And 
Before we leave, I show you the uh, Fluffy's gravity script, which I've working on one of my moons. That's also an amazing experience. Um, you. Okay, so now I've I've put on a lot of happy green smiling smileys. So now uh, it gets time to be a bit more critical. Uh, so there's not only that smiling smiley, but for mm -hmm. example, also like a neutral one. And the neutral one goes to what? Goes to goes to high. So let's fly down again. I hope this is not headache inducing that you all have to see my. POV now because I, I know that I tend to move a lot when I'm excited and I'm really excited because this first stream in my life. So um, high fidelity's graphics get a neutral thingy. Why? Well, they are quite amazing, but uh, there's a different platform called Sansa who can do one thing really good and that's graphics and uh, so i have to admit that i've seen better graphics but hi-fi is on the way up so maybe that's a yellow with a hint of green let's let's put some more green into that yellow thingy Make it a greenish yellow. Don't close the color thingy. Yeah. Okay, now it's neon. So the graphics are in the middle between smiley smiley and neutral smiley. Uh, you get what I mean. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we also have not so happy thingies, which, whoops, no, I did too many. Okay, unfortunately, one of these not so happy p emojis goes to our user concurrency because this shift of direction um, really uh, created a lot of doubt and insecurity among the creators and at the moment we definitely need more more users in here like 450 at least every day to have that cool crowd feeling What's also gets a not happy emoji for not being existent is the gamification aspect. So at first I thought, ah, that's maybe like a bit cheesy, uh, maybe not so important and who cares? But I've seen, for example, in Science Space, and I think in Sansa, they started it also. They 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 gave out achievements, basically basically for for learning and mastering the tutorials. So if you would uh, make a friend, you'd get a, an achievement, or if you travel to some location. So for for everything you learned while uh, 
by your first uh, times in science space, you got some achievement, and and that that's like yeah, like like the likes on on Facebook or like like yeah, what what gaming is about gives you some dopamine into your body and is a, is a nice way to to reward users for for learning how how the platform works. So I'm a fan of gamification and I think Hi-Fi might implement it. That'd be a nice idea. Um, yay! So let's get back to my clone thingy. So we need more of these yellow guys. Oop. For example, for the media import, we talked about um, we talked about in the beginning of the stream. So it's it's still like a hassle if uh, if people wanna wanna watch one media stream synchronized for everybody that's doable but you need a great great smart super geek to do that so so not red for the doable but yellow for the it's complicated the same oops no i wanted to clone you didn't want to take you Oops. Let's get back to the the same appeals for uh, the chat, mm -hmm. which is also like a scripted chat, and uh, people have to activate it. So there's no default chat in in high fidelity yet, and um, yeah, people have to look for it and have to find it in their scripts folder. So or get like custom-made uh, scripts for a chat and you have to be sure that your friends run the same chat so chat is yeah yellow emoji um where do i go now what what can i tell you about the hosting i really like being my own queen in my own domain. I really like the idea of hosting the stuff myself. But it's complicated. Um, so let's exchange this to a uh, fill-in thingy and put up the finger paint once again. So I'm just going to write self here and won't evaluate it at it's not self, self. There's one bar missing. So I won't evaluate the hosting at all because that's really a matter of taste. Some people are like happy when they can upload the stuff and go for it uh, and other people are happy when they are the masters and mistresses of their own worlds. Um, so I think I got almost everything. Um, uh yeah unfortunately i have to clone one more of these red guys because high fidelity's learning curve is like incredibly steep so there's definitely easier platforms to to get in but once you've mastered it uh, you can be really happy and and free to do everything your imagination drives you to um, 
So what's the last not least? Oh, yeah. Two. Two last not least are economy and content protection. Um, we were talking about the content protection, which basically isn't possible as soon as you have to load a um, model to your computer in order for it to play back. So ripping will always be possible, but we think High Fidelity is doing a good trick with this proof of provenance idea. So yellow, here we go. Oops. Now I cloned it accidentally two times, but that's okay because I wanted to put a yellow one on to economy as well. Because uh, As super fond as I'm of the idea of like funding our own blockchain, uh, I think there's a point to it. Maybe using something existing, ex in existing something, some some pre-made blockchain system to uh, to run the economy might have been better and might have created also more more trust for the users. So I love the blockchain based economy, but maybe outsource that the next time. So that was my great chart. And This gets me back to the spectator cam. As soon as I found some nice waving position, I can say thank you everybody for watching that stream. I'm still <laughs> super excited. And yeah, not so scared anymore. I hope it wasn't too chaotic. I hope you liked it. Piper Darling, come in here. Let's wave together. Show off our user concurrency. Um, should I put my headset on? Because I can't wave otherwise. <laughs> then use an emoji <laughs> uh, or emote uh, app. A I bit here, here, here in the in the viewfinder, you can see uh, who's where you are hey. in the picture. We we get more cozy. Well, Darling, the where's Darling gone? The There's Darling. Don't see, Kay. don't you see my spectator cam there? You find no, it? no, we just see the camera, but there's no preview. Only oh. you see the preview. Oh, okay. So now you are in the preview, and and darling too. So let's wave all around. Thanks a lot waving. for watching. Come back for the next show of uh, what's it called? Say yes to us, the metaverse. I'm uh, hand waving. Thanks a lot Sorry, for hand. watching and check out High Fidelity. Yeah, Thanks yeah, a million. Yeah, 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 bye yeah, bye. Yeah, 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 and yeah, let's fly yeah. out of the stream. Then we can have this as a nice end still for viewers to study. Okay. So you're going to count down? See you. Yay.